Okay, so, um, Ace? Yeah, Raccoon? Yeah, so we're doing a, um, kind of like a quick review, but basically they're more like a discussion review, and that's yeah. going to be on the, uh, the Revenants, oh, okay. which we just saw yesterday, I believe it was. We did, it was like probably 12 hours ago-ish, maybe less. Maybe, not that it really matters, because no. this video could go off at any point in time. But, um, yeah, we thought we'd um, actually do our, um, you know, thoughts and review the film. I know um, some of you guys have watched some of the other quick reviews, so I thought, hey, maybe let me just, you know, bring Ace on board for this one and kind of do it more like a review. So it will be longer, and uh, there are going to be spoilers on this podcast throughout, but um, not podcast, um, well, review. Podcast. I'm too yeah. used to doing, I'm too used to doing um, podcasts. It's but, a unique thing. It's on its own. It's on its own. All right. All right. Mo- um, moving on. Um, so, yeah, spoilers throughout. But first, before we get to the spoilers, we're going to talk quickly about our cinema viewing experience because we thought it was it was quite interesting for the most part. Very, very strange. Yeah, so we're not going to say where or like who was responsible for any of this, but I know once we got to the cinema, it was for about 8 o'clock on a Saturday evening. Yeah. It was surprisingly packed. Yeah, and we quite was... a lot. I kept noting how I'm surprised there were so many people. Yeah, it was, it was a bit odd. Um, especially just the ticket line and just yeah. people going there. We would, I mean, we were debating: is it Star Wars? Are people really here yeah. to see Revenant? I, I honestly didn't think that many people were there to see the Revenant, but it turns out our, our screen was packed, but not by that much. No, um, um, I, I was debating whether it was people eight because a lot of people like the Tarantino films just for the gore and violence. But, but knowing what I know about that film, I don't think they'll be happy with that kind of film. They're yeah. probably going, probably be sitting there in the film, being like, oh. Boring. Why are people just talking? Like, jeez. Why do I have to think? I just want the blood. <laughs> Bloodlust. <laughs> oh, no, that should be the new film, Bloodlust. I'm sure that's probably already a film. If not, okay, okay, I'm checking this afterwards. If not, sure, sure. it's on the list. Sure. Um, so, but yeah, once we actually got into the uh, screen and finally, because we were with um, a group of about six, I believe it was. Uh, seven, um, seven. Seven, seven. Seven, yeah. seven. And um, finally got in and... Before we get into a view, I, mean, I must say this is probably one of the most annoying audiences we've had to sit through <laughs> um, watching a film. I mean, we've we've had somewhat bad experiences with uh, audiences, and we're not trying to like say, "Oh, this is the cinema's fault." We'll no, get no. to the, what is the cinema's fault in a sec. But um, yeah, it's just really bad audience. I think first of all, well, actually, we'll just go through the list. So first of all, the um, the two guys that were next to me. Yeah. Uh, there was two guys, um, don't know how old they are, they're probably in their teen years. Yeah, they look teens. like 16, 17 to me. Something like that. Wouldn't shut up throughout most of the film, and I can understand if, you know, like, oh, that's a cool scene, you may mm-hmm. be like to your friend, oh, that's good. But when you're properly turning around to your friend and talking to them fairly loudly without any consideration to the fact that someone might be, you know, maybe, oh my god, someone in the cinema <laughs> might be trying to watch the film? Exactly. <gasps> they don't want to hear a running commentary to a new film. <gasps> I never would have guessed. Um, it's a very new concept. Some people don't know it. Those two guys were pretty annoying, and uh, you didn't quite experience this, but there was a woman almost behind me who, yeah. throughout most of the film, was going... <sighs> <sighs> yeah, just... Uh, that's the thing. I could hear it, not as loud as you, mm. and I just thought she was going, oh my god, like, kind of excited thing, but no, apparently not. I felt her breath. She was, she was that loud, and she kept turning around to what I think was her boyfriend and yeah. asking him really dumb questions. Oh, no. Like, what is he doing? And really? I was like, and I was like, love, we're like two hours into this film, and you want to ask what he's doing. Yeah, why wasn't she paying attention? She was too busy going, oh. Yeah. Oh, and she did it at some of the dumbest moments, which we, we haven't gone into spoilers yet, but like, I'll say when she was doing these gasps. Yeah. And um, the third and most interesting thing was the fact that there was an underage kid in the um, screening, front row as well. Yeah, she looked like she was uh, about 8 to 10 maybe. I'm not too good with children ages. Yeah, at first I thought, okay, no disrespect, maybe I thought it was like a, a smaller lady, yeah. perhaps. but Or someone that's got the, um, the growth um, disorder. Yeah, maybe. And um, upon, because eventually when we first saw the kid, we saw yeah. them like walk out the cinema and was like, that's a kid. Yeah, exactly. And it wasn't until the kid came back and this was the real kind of, this is what gave it away. When she came back into cinema skipping. Yeah, exactly. And it was like, okay, no grown woman or teenager that small is going to skip. No. 
And to also top it off, I do like how, because they were the front row, they both of them, her mum and the kid, put their feet up to watch the film. And I'm like, yeah. okay, Susie, you having a good time watching The Revenant? <laughs> yes, mummy, this 15 film is great. <laughs> yes, did you like, oh, you see that bit? He, he, he might have killed him. Did you see all that violence, Susie? I thought that was lovely, mummy. Oh, God, I mean... I mean, before we get into this, anything else you want to add to the audience? Yeah, um, when, when we were in line to get the tickets, mm. uh, we were chatting shit about Star Wars. Oh, cause, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we thought, um, obviously, a lot of people were here for Star Wars. And when we were chatting shit about it, some guy in front of us who was buying his ticket just turned around looking at us like, you what, mate? <laughs> so we were just staring at him and I was like, yeah, you're going to do anything. And he was just like, oh, okay. Thanks. I think we pretty much just stopped our conversation and just looked at him and it was like, yeah? And? <laughs> It was. I have an opinion. Yeah, it, it was beautiful, and I think that kind of went to show that it's still Star Wars that this massive crowd is going to see. Which I'm really surprised about because I thought people would have been over it by yeah. now. I mean, you know, I'm over it already. Throw it in the dumpster. No one cares anymore. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the film. I already said my piece about it, but I I thought the hype would have died already. I don't think I don't think it's even worth seeing Star Wars anymore now that we've seen the Revenant. Personally, it's just like. Yeah, that, that's that's definitely a thing to say. Yeah, I, I, I think agree. you definitely kind of go, you know, when you want to talk about a good film, you talk about The Revenant. When you talk about a mediocre film, you might talk about Star Wars. I, I wouldn't say mediocre. I'd say good, but disappointing. Okay, okay. All right. But, um, yeah, but I would just like to say before we start the review, so spoilers coming up, um, to the two guys who were talking next to me and the woman behind me, fuck you. <laughs> Seriously, don't ever go to cinema ever again. Yeah. Anyway, right. So the time is about six minutes. So from oh well, six minutes, seven minutes. So from the mark, we are doing spoilers as soon as I stop speaking. So you have until then to either stop um, listening or um, just listen to it anyway if you've already seen it, or just don't care. So or let's just go. pause the video, go out, watch it, and then come back. And exactly. Just leave it on thingy. So right, spoilers here from now on. Okay. So the Revenant. So. Uh, this film released uh, 2015, technically in, in America. America. Yeah. Yes, and um, we didn't really get it until uh, 2016. It was like mm. about January. I can't remember exactly when, but um, this film is directed by. Um, okay, let's ch- let let's try it. Alejandro G. But do you want to um, Alejandro G. Alejandro G. G. But do you want to try and do his uh, last name, second name? Sure. Uh, where is it? It's just there. Okay, uh, Alejandro G. In a ritu, I think that's we are guessing. We're yeah. really sorry if we're like mispronouncing your name. If you know how, please like write it phonetically down so I can. I, I want to learn it. Sure. Um, so yeah, so we finally saw the film. Um, first of all, like the first thing you kind of get hit by is like that opening sequence, which oh. was just. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Like I think it sums up the whole film perfectly because like. Not only is the film, and we'll probably be saying this throughout this like um, review. Not only was the film beautiful to look at yeah. and like masterful in its execution, from like detail to like camera angles and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that opening scene kind of it kind of threw you in, and like I I know I was talking to you on the bus, and I was kind yeah. of saying it felt a bit like a like a documentary in some sense. Yeah, yeah, the way it was shot, it it definitely felt like documentary. Like I I think you said at one point it was like you can imagine Leonardo DiCaprio saying, "All right." Come on, come on yeah. to the camera, man. There was, I, I, you know, I half expected him to kind of be like, come on, come on. Yeah. You know, just, you know, I mean, I, I think a shot like that might have worked if, if it was, let's say, a POV shot and he was yeah. dragging some guy, he gets shot and then he just leaves the camera there. Camera stays there and you see it was yeah. a guy or something like that. But I mean, um, fantastic opening sequence because yeah. you got like, like, that, you know, it tells you everything about the film. It's going to be serious. It's going to be raw. I mean, you get... Um, uh, that action scene was basically one shot. Yeah. Very nice choreographed. Yeah. I mean, it was beautiful. There may have, I mean, I don't know if there, it was there are in some one hidden take. Tapes. I'm sure there yeah. were some hidden cuts, but like, other than that, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it just shows it's like good choreograph can it can tell the story very well. Exactly. I mean, um, just fan- fantastic stuff. I mean, the, and the thing was, because a lot of he holds and a lot of shots they're yeah. all done in one take and. The camera movement is so smooth, and it's so smooth, but at the same time, it feels like... It feels organic. It feels like... Yeah, it feels organic. Like, it doesn't... It's not, you know, not focus shot. There's yeah. there's shake, but it's not, like, to a crazy, like, yeah, Cloverfield it, kind of shake. You're not, you're not going to have one of those, like, action s- scenes, like, shaky cams going on. Yeah, it feels like someone's holding the camera, yeah. but it feels more like a, it's someone's view. 
yeah, like some exactly. invisible. Per- that's hence why I say it's got a documentary kind of like style to it. Because I mean, and you know, with some of these shots, he you know he's getting in close. There's points where Leonardo he's breathing on the camera like yeah. properly. There's, you can hear that breathing. You can hear that breath. Sound design is fantastic oh, as it's well. It's beautiful. Um, you can hear it, and I mean, you, you know, you, you felt that breath. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, ooh, Leo, need some bro- <laughs> need some mints, but like. I mean, you, you, you felt, I mean, as you get real close, you see the detail yeah. of everyone, and, you know, that, that makes for some, like, slightly uh, tenser scenes throughout the film. But um, overall, like, opening scene, and you kind of, like, um, from there, because I believe um, the Americans, they're kind of getting attacked by the, uh, I, guess you, I guess you could just put it down as the Indians, but, uh, like... Yeah, um, Native American. I think, um, Native Americans... They, they constantly refer to them as the Re, so I'm presuming re. that was, yeah. The, the re, re, and I also heard them referred to as Reds as well. That that's a racial. Term. I know it's, yeah. I know it's a racial term. But I don't. I'm not, I don't know if the re is clan name or a term or what. I don't. I, I don't know, but I yeah. we can understand that. I mean, I think everyone kind of knows the story. We've got the situation with the yeah. American, the Indians, and then obviously the French are also thrown in there as yeah. well, who are somewhat the villain in this because they're kind of they they think yeah they they're see, kind of the hidden villain. Like, you, in some you kind of yeah. see them as an outsider group, and mm. then you realise they have more to do with it as it goes on. Yeah, you do. Things start to unravel where um, you kind of see that, because um, uh, I, I believe the Indians, they're kind of like, oh, the main chief guy, he's like, you know, he's doing deals with them because yeah. they're trying to, you know, screw over the Americans, get the uh, the pelts. Yeah, and um, and because uh, he's looking for his daughter. He's looking for his daughter, which... Um, uh, they have somehow. yeah. The, the French have the daughter, which yeah. I presume they had hidden her when they arrived. She didn't quite look hidden when we see her, but well, well, they probably just I mean, chucked for, her to one yeah, side. I'm guessing for like the other point, like when mm. they the Native Americans were there. Yeah. So that was like kind of one section of the film, which it balanced it out because I'm glad it wasn't just because I think the main the main part of this film is Leo, kind of what yeah. happens to him, and I'm glad it wasn't just two and a half hours of him doing that not that i think it would have yeah. been crap but like i mean you kind of ha- so essentially what happens is after the attack um obviously if you've seen this film or whatever yeah. Yeah. but um after the attack the rest of the crew there are about 10 men uh yeah yeah ten. something like 10 men they kind of go on the river they kind of drop the, their stuff they're like oh we're being hunted so they kind of like Th- they know. try and get away from the uh the re and mm. they're hiding their uh bow they're taking all their supplies and trying they to burn get it off. don't they no they burn the boat yeah they are like burn it and like set it off yeah and i think they say something about hiding the pelts but they don't or at least i didn't see it or I, they were kind of dragging stuff but yeah they yeah. were taking some stuff i think the um well we get to the end we'll get to that in a sec yeah. but like essentially what happens is um they kind of on the on the foot trying to get it back because they got like some pelts trading and all that kind of stuff yeah. and uh leonardo the caprio um you know, they, 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 you can tell there's kind of some beef with, like, um, his character, his son, who is yeah. obviously a Native American, which obviously would, you know, that's not going to gel well with no. some people, particularly um, uh, one Tom character, Hardy. Tom Hardy's character, yeah. who um, I completely, I know he was called John, but I can't remember his uh, second name, because I know his second name is, uh, yeah, I've, I forget, because... Yeah, his second because uh, John Fitzgerald. John Fitzgerald. And yeah. I think, did they refer to him as John something else, uh, or am no, I just? No, I, just I think ma- they just call him Fitzgerald. I'm imagining things then. Yeah, so uh, John Fitzgerald, who um, played by Tom Hardy, really happy to see Tom Hardy put yeah. in another good performance, and also a performance I don't think the girls are going to swoon over. No, I mean, uh, funny enough, halfway through the film, that's when I clocked it was Tom Hardy because yeah. th- his performance is amazing, but. No, girls are not going to be like heartthrob for this he, one. He looks old. He looks broken down. He's got he half looks, his hair gone. Yeah, he looks cruel in this movie. Like that's a way of. A way he, look, of he looks fucked up. He's. Yeah. I mean, he is a fucked up character. But he looks. Yeah. He looks halfway dead. I mean, and I mean, you got two heartthrobs right there, and particularly the end yeah. scene where they're like, ah, oh know, yeah. I'm sure it'll probably be like that, but um. So uh, yeah, so throughout the you know the, you know both these three characters you clearly don't click and you can tell that Leo has some kind of like uh, connection between like the, the natives and American and yeah. all that kind of stuff and um kind of leads to what I guess one of the um the more brutal and kind of slightly shocking scene where he um he decides to go after a bear or what, no he gets attacked well, by a bear I yeah he he's uh, scouting for um the group and he ends up seeing a bunch of uh, bear cubs. Hmm. And he's about to go and shoot one when a mama bear pops, like comes out of nowhere, and oh, it's brutal. Yeah, that is a pretty brutal scene. Like I knew there was a 
before seeing the film, I know there's a bear in the film. I yeah. don't know what its um, relevance to to yeah. the uh, the film was, but um, because I I remember there was that whole thing going on about before the film. It's like, oh yeah, in this film, like um, Leonardo DiCaprio gets raped by a bear, and I was like, what? No. And then it like as it like the film was coming out, it was like, no, that does not happen. But that was a commonly perceived thing that that was happening in the film. It's like, no, that does not happen. I never got that impression. Yeah, that that's um, a lot of news stories were saying that before the film was coming out, and then Leonardo DiCaprio said, "No, that does not happen." Yeah. Um, if anyone is saying that, you may need to distance yourself away from them because yeah. that's some that's some quite disturbing yeah. thinking, guys. Because because I think um, even one of the people that were part of our group, uh, they were actually saying that. Because they were, they they they, like, they jokingly said that. Cause oh, because um, <laughs> one of them said, "You told me this was going to happen." And then they started joking about it. They were they were joking yeah. about it. I don't think they were like they they were just like, "Oh yeah, that yeah. that rope scene is like you know." And because one of them did think that was going to happen, that's why they went to see it. Cause and, they thought it was funny. Yeah, and she also um, uh, they also jokingly said, yeah. um, "Oh yeah, not enough violence." So I guess you oh, also yeah. went to see it for that that scene as well. Yeah, but I mean. If yeah. you think that, then go check yourself out. But that's not yeah, the case. Exactly. Um, this was, I mean, it was a brutal beatdown. Like that, it shows you how monstrous a bear can be. Yeah, when it, especially as a mother bear, and I mean, um, I mean, literally, he goes after this thing three times. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he, exactly. he, 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 um, he shoots it in the face, breaks its jaw, which yeah. is like fucked up, and then he like, and it's... then he gets beaten down more. He gets scratched up in the back and like pounded on yeah and then he starts to stab the he thing he stabs the thing right in the face and then um, finally kills it unfortunately like, falling down a cliff yeah and getting scratched right into his throat yeah. and like when of uh, luckily his his uh his friends come along and kind of helping and it's like this big situation with oh we've got to save him and they're, yeah. they're kind of freaking out and like people don't know he's leaving he's gonna be dead he's dead anyway yeah. what he's gonna do and nicely they kind of you know they do kind of bandage him up and kind of take they him do. but it gets to the point where they just can't go on and they're like you get that moment where they're like, oh, we've got to put him down. We can't yeah. go any further. And I'm like, no. Nah. And then uh, that's where, uh, like, Donald Gleason's character uh, mm. steps in. He's um, he's ended up like, well, you know, we'll pay everyone more if you can help get this, like, get him home. Because he was their, kind of, um, their kind of captain, leader. Yeah. Because yeah. um, he was he was tasked with it. He was like, you know, he's a man of honor. So he was like, well, yeah. I'm not going to do that. It's not right. You know, exactly. So, he kind of passes it to um, Tom Hardy's character, and I forget the other um, character, but he's he's a younger kind of character. He's um, uh, I think he's in Maze Runner and Scorched Trials, hmm. which is strange. The the funny thing about like just just off topic real quick is about the the Maze Trials and Maze uh, yeah, Runner yeah. films is yeah, all the act all the actors are pretty good in that. Yeah, it's a shame are. no one cares about the film. No, well, no. no, well, it's a shame no one cares about the film and the films are crap. Yeah. But hopefully, well, luckily, some of them have branched yeah, out into exactly. much better films. I mean, getting this, into something good. This film is, a, I think, a shoe in for an Oscar. Yeah. But, um, uh, so kind of these two characters, they're kind of tasked with like looking after him. To which the captain kind of gives the orders, like, make sure he gets a, a proper burial. Yeah. Like, yeah, if, if he's gonna end up dying and you need to move on, bury him. The odds are against him. Yeah. Which, which I guess is is a nice kind of, and this works to the the film's uh, um, benefit because the film is about surviving, and I think throughout the film. You are with Leo, and you yeah. are rooting for Leo, no matter how yeah. much hardship he goes through. You're like, come on, Leo, you can do uh, it. Oh, uh, just the amount of shit he goes through. Like he mm. is clawing his way around. He is screaming in pain. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Tom Hardy's character freaks the hell out and is just like, yeah, yeah I guess I might as well kill him now for yeah, exactly for whatever reason, which is a yeah. pretty tense scene. And unfortunately, through that, he unfortunately kills his son and yeah. just leaves him just yeah, somewhere. Yeah. It's like he. he he kills the son and tries to get rid of him and then he's just telling the young old guy it's like yeah I saw some Native Americans coming around we hmm. need to leave yeah basically just lying to the new kids and you kind of and you kind of wonder whether because you know there is a scene where he is kind of talking about like how his head got messed up and how yeah. he is obviously insane and a diehard Christian and um you do kind of wonder with this character whether he actually is crazy or he's just yeah misguided and very smart see it's um Con- considering the like because he had a kind of scar thing on his yeah. head where uh, mm. it's that whole like stereotype of scalping mm. yeah so I was wondering if someone tried to do that to him and that's why he ended up going crazy and he had this massive hate 
Most most likely, but at the same time, he goes a lot. He, he talks a lot about Christianity yeah. and how that. So something obviously hit, hit a nerve yeah. in his brain. And like I said, you, you get that good dynamic where you're like, you're not sure if he is like just a crazy guy or he's just a very smart guy yeah. who's just like you just you just do whatever because yeah. he does act extremely rash. Because you know yeah. with that scene where he tells him there's the reds, he could have easily been like, oh, I fucking saw some reds and it, or it was just yeah. some deer or. Or like we were just making yeah. it up, or in the and sense, he's like, oh, there were twenty of them, there were twelve of them. Yeah, and even when he's confronted, even he doesn't seem quite sure, and he doesn't even yeah. try and cover up his lies. Yeah, he's just kind of like, yeah, you're coming with me, or you're dead, basically. Yeah. He doesn't really care, and this kind of like gets into like the the, the second act of the film, where we're basically following uh, Leo throughout the film, you know, kind of like uh, surviving and uh, yeah. you know just trying to because surviving in the wild, patching up his dirty wounds, like. Yeah. Those are Jeez. brutal. I mean, you you re really, really feel it, and I think every time the kind of the wounds kind of came open, I yeah. think that one stupid wound was a, <gasps> yeah, all the time. I can understand, like, okay, maybe this is the first time you've seen blood that yeah. graphic. I can understand you being like, oh, not sure if I can, yeah. oh, handle this. Maybe but, maybe she was like doing that kind of noise. It's like, oh, I thought Leonardo DiCaprio was going to be pretty in this movie. So no, she's like, oh, did she not look at the poster? Yeah, probably not. Like. Leo is like covered in like a bear skin and there's like got blood over his face and it's like oh okay is that yeah. pretty for you because if that is then you know your boyfriend needs to get dumped yeah oh. but um I'm pretty oh. sure she did get dumped and I hope she did because her boyfriend I think was just like can he you... was trying to watch the movie yeah he was like can you shut up yeah because when she asked questions he didn't respond yeah <laughs> he did not he, respond he was just watching yeah he was probably like just shut up exactly watch the film fool but um from from that point we get some of like the uh the better visuals with lighting yeah. and like the natural environment and you kind of look at this film for like the aesthetic kind of directing and it is shot acting and stuff like that and you kind of think and you kind of think wow i can't believe like some of the people from this film didn't want to film on location yeah yeah because I, I remember hearing about that it, like the director said um everyone in this film were really pissed off while shooting it because it was on location it wasn't everyone well, yeah, a, a lot of people. It was a few. Yeah, and then he said, but if we shot in a studio, it, they wouldn't have been how the characters would have been. Yeah, I believe one of the quotes was something along the lines of, if we use CGI, it would have looked like shit. Yeah. Beautiful um, quote there. More people need to learn that. There's something along the lines, but I'm sure you can find that quote. But um, I think, it, um, and obviously, I think all those naysayers need to shut up because mm. it's like, oh, look, how many Oscars is this film up for? Yeah. I'd be surprised if this film doesn't win one. I kind of hope Leo wins the Oscar. I think he definitely deserves it. I mean, I mean you, you could kind of see this film. Like, I made this joke. It's like the metaphor of, like, Leo's punishment trying to get an Oscar. Because <laughs> he goes through some brutal stuff and everyone's trying to stop him. He does, yeah. Um, I mean, you could convert, like, the... um. You can convert like the uh, Native Americans to the naysayers. Yeah. And you can convert the French to like um, the Oscar, um, the panel. And yeah. You can convert the uh, Americans to other actors. Yeah, you can convert like I guess um, Fritz Gerald to um, uh, I'm trying to think the other people he's up against for yeah, best actor. Yeah. I guess um, Tom Hardy. I guess, but um, <laughs> it was um, it was good. And he goes he goes through some real shit, and like you, you can tell he's he's smart about it. He, yeah. he can kind of handle himself so you're kind of so there's never a point where you're like oh he'll be fine no you're always like oh shit oh shit yeah is he all right is he all right you know because every situation it seems to add up like it's not that oh okay he just got through that fine he didn't get any damage he ends up getting more damage yeah and it's painful to watch but it's beautiful as well it is it is quite painful i wasn't like squeamish or anything i'm not a squeamish yeah. person but like um there were there were a few shots like particularly I noticed there was one sign we had like part of the skin off his fingers yeah. missing which I think was I was like ooh and then some of the scars on his back were yeah. like pretty deep especially when they were just oozing blood yeah like that first bit when oh. they kind of just move his body and it yeah. like uh, pools of blood it was like ooh but um it was, it was a great film I mean um uh there were some great shots I mean there was yeah. also one thing I liked about the film there was a lot of like spiritual yes journey almost kind of stuff which. I don't think was trying to say too much because I don't yeah. think that was the point of those. I think they were meant to be confusing in a sense because with you know cultures like the Native Americans, mm. like um, Hawaiian culture and stuff like that, it is very much within like 
the spiritual kind of you know dream almost like yeah, states yeah. and there were some really great shots with some of that stuff and they kind of told his backstory pretty well in, in yeah, that kind they, of sense yeah they told it through some nice flashbacks um there, there was one scene and it was like half a second long yeah that i had a problem with which i told you about yeah, yeah. and it was a uh, where like his wife is floating above him yeah and it's like the wide shot and to me that looked goofy but that was one shot lasted for half a second in a three hour film so it's nothing it's fine i mean it's no problem they probably should have done it like um uh have you seen the original the eye the The, japanese uh, original no i haven't there's a great scene which if you if you can if you can handle watching the scene because it is quite tense where um she's kind of in an elevator yeah and like she's kind of just um uh, she's kind of waiting for the elevator and she knows there's like a ghost behind her yeah and like the ghost is like right behind her but you don't see its face and it's Ooh. floating and like because the ghost knows her she's there and she's just not looking at it, she's pressing the button and you see the ghost slowly move to the left oh, of like the camera geez. and she's just like pressing the button and it's like you gotta wait for that shot because you're like oh my god what does this guy look like you see that first i uh, you, know, you see half his face come out you're like oh okay he looks all right but then you get a bit further and you're like oh you're literally going press that button yeah press that button you know yeah i I need to see that now um yeah i'll probably bring up the clip i'll probably put in the description for anyone who wants Mm. to um see that and doesn't mind spoilers but um i think um i mean was it what i think my favorite quote from the film was um uh revenge is in the hands of the creator it it, it was in the creator's hand which i thought um went towards the end of the film very nicely and i think we can uh, kind of talk about that in a sense Which, but, um, oh, I'd like to link that actually to the title of the film itself Yeah, The Revenant, mm-hmm. it is a spirit after vengeance Ooh. exactly so yeah it, it fits in very well to that quote and the character of Leo himself yes it does, I mean um, the guy the guy's a badass, he he's is. a badass without being like I'm a, I'm a badass yeah. no, he, he never thinks of himself as that, yeah. even when he's like broken a wall down, he's like no I've got to survive and yeah. I do like how um uh, there is one point where he does when he when he does make it back to um safety and like you know um i forget the other guy's name but he's uh, the captain. donald gleason guy yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. the actor's name andrew henry um that, captain andrew henry yeah. um when he's basically saying uh, oh no point you, you need to rest for this yeah. day we'll go find john and he's like no oh, man he took he took everything from me I, I got i got nothing left yeah i mean you know is like i got him trapped yeah he doesn't uh, know it yet and, and he's like I'm not afraid to die. I've, re- I've died already. Yeah. And it was like, oof. That was great. I'm, I'm glad they kind of incorporated the idea of, you know, um, when there's nothing left to lose, you win. Exactly. Exactly. Which is great. But, um... Yeah, this uh, leads him on his hunt for revenge against um, Fitzgerald. Yeah, Fitzgerald, which, which um... He, he goes with Captain Andrew. Yeah. Which I'm surprised they didn't go with a few more people, but I can understand it's, yeah. it's a It's one a personal guy. issue. It's one guy. Yeah. I can understand why they wouldn't bring everyone. Yeah. But um, that scene in itself is quite tense. Um, it really is. It's very nicely set up. Yeah, because it just comes down to three people. Yeah. And then it comes down to two people. Yeah. And you're like, oh. And I, I mean, the way the way Leo manages to coax him out was very yeah. clever when he just, when he kind of just like straight on the door. Like, yeah. Sh- like I me- mean, Metal Gear style. Wh- when I saw him get the stick, I was like, I know what he's doing. Because I've seen, like, they've done that idea in other films. And I'm not saying them doing that idea is a bad thing. No. I, I was like, genius move yeah genius it's it's smart i was i was kind of on those lines where i kind of where i was i was unsure at first because yeah. i was like because i saw him get the stick and i was like hmm, i thought maybe he's gonna like maybe bludgeon like a, a like a, a stick in some yeah. sense so he kind of has like a like another option where it's yeah. like if he loses his gun he'll be able to take him out yeah. but then when i saw him kind of just like you know leave the stick as it was i was like okay he's gonna make a decoy he's already yeah. got a dead body and um it was great because he managed to shoot him and then he kind of chase him down and it kind of comes, you know, they're running and then it's just like, no, nah, yeah. if you want to fight, let's fight. Exactly. And, oh, that fight is, oh, fight. geez. The fight was great. I think um, one of the bit, the bit that it was like, shit just got real moment, okay, mm-hmm. when they're both on the floor and he just flips over and just stabs into his fingers and cuts him off. It was like, nah, that this is great. Because even he knew that. He was like, right, you want to fight? He gets out his exactly. sword. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Big massive knife against axe. Hmm. It's like wow. Okay. Yeah, he's like um, people getting stabbed in the leg. People getting yeah. stabbed in the everywhere. And I mean, even at the end, the final scene where like um, he doesn't even kill him. He just lets no. the Indians kill him. He's just yeah. like, kind of like just lifts onto the river. The Indian yeah. guy just like, so, um, his neck. 
Yeah, we didn't mention it, but mm. um, Leo ended up helping uh, save the Native American uh, chief's daughter. Yeah, the daughter yeah. at the time. And she recognizes him, obviously, by saving her, so they let him live. Yeah. But yeah, and I mean, and I think also they probably would have let him live anyway because it goes back to the whole idea of revenge is in, yeah. in the creator's hands. I think yeah. because because they saw that they saw we fine, and he was just like, no. Yeah. You know, I think they would have probably even if they probably would have been like, I understand you're not like them. I, yeah. I could imagine maybe that happening, but um, yeah, that scene was great though when he was attacking because he was attacking the French had um the daughter and I think um uh. And I think after, because once he kind of helped her and she was like, I'm going to cut off your balls. Yeah. And you get that show and she actually did. And I yeah. was like, oh, You just see geez. the guy like drop to his knees and blood coming from his like, oh, amazing. I, I, I had to laugh at that. There wasn't a lot yeah. of funny scenes in this film, but um, no. I didn't think it needed I like, think, it uh, didn't need a dumb, oh, ho, ho, you know, kind of scene. But There, there was a bit of funny scene where they're like sticking their tongues out for like the snow. Yeah. <laughs> like that guy himself, he, he was amusing. Yes, he was um the guy Leo meets. um. He was like his a, journey, yeah. uh, I guess we could say Native American shaman in a way, maybe not not necessarily, but an idea or a spirit guy. It's you could kind of point to those ideas. Maybe, maybe you probably probably like that. But yeah. um, that was um, yeah. And the other, the only other like I guess funny scene because like I said, they're not ha ha funny yeah. scenes. They're just like oh, that's humorous. And yeah. there was another scene where Leo's kind of for the first time he's on his own. And he sees like the uh, the deer crossing the river, and he kind of gets oh, out yeah, his gun yeah. and he fires it yeah. and he's like it's just oh, no, it's, it's, like it's the, just sticks uh, yeah. yeah the walking stick he's using and he's like aiming and it just kind of reminds me of that bit from um, A New Hope when <laughs> they're watching the Millennium Falcon drop down and there's that guy scanning it with a thing and I think there's that family guy bit where he's like pew pew so it just reminded me of that and I, I don't think because um, uh, I, I think doesn't he go as well yeah I think, but I, I think he made the noise I think he did make the noise yeah I think he went yeah. or something yeah. like that because he was just like, ah, uh, if only. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think we should also talk about, um, speaking of Star Wars, the other scene where... Um, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> there, there was a scene where, like, um, and I've got to talk about that damn woman again. Mm. So, when Leo's kind of just camping out in the snow and the Indians kind of attack him, yeah. she sighed then because I guess she was annoyed at the fact that he didn't realise that while sleeping people were attacking him. So, she was like, yeah. how could he not know that people are attacking him? Why is he sleeping? Yeah, in colonial America, where people don't exactly know where everyone this is. This film is terrible, and he, he unfortunately falls off like a um a cliff. Yeah, a cliff. Um, he he's on horseback, and as he's running away, they end up going over a cliff. Horse just smashes down. He lands in a tree and falls through. Mm. Um, she also sighed at that scene as well when he fell. She's like, <sighs> "Gosh, how could he not know there was a cliff there?" She knew it clearly. Mm. Yeah, she she hacked the film. Yeah, but um. And then, yeah, so he kind of, like, because uh, it's getting cold, he, like, takes the guts out of the, uh, the horse, yeah. which is great, because you, like... Ugh. Yeah, you just see him pull all the organs out and just placing it over. Put it to one side, yeah. get him nice and cosy. And, yeah, he just, like, he takes off his clothes, it makes sense, obviously, body heat, and then he just gets inside the horse. Mm. And, obviously, I, I called that the Hoff scene, because yeah. uh, in Empire Strikes Back, uh, uh, Han Solo does that for Luke, mm. when Luke's gone like unconscious in the cold yeah so he kills the top what well, tonton dies and he just yeah, cuts yeah. it open and puts uh luke inside so, and get in there it was a more brutal version of that yeah it was realistic yeah not that very... i not that i obviously that's fantasy but yeah, obviously exactly. living creature had guts yeah you know? i mean uh, i'm just trying to imagine like luke skywalker in that just covered in tonton guts now um I don't know, unless they want to do a Photoshop or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that that's the next plan. All right, that's what I'm saying. All right, so I think we've kind of talked about the film uh, to great lengths. I mean, there wasn't anything that I think we would... I know you said that one scene with the spiritual yeah, was like the that only... Was hot, like that's not even worth talking it's about. It's nothing. I mean, I think a lot of... The only other negative some people are trying to bring on this film is mm. like the use of uh, CGI with like the yeah. animals, to which I'd be like, fuck off. Yeah, it, it's... It never really interferes with the film. Yeah, it's like and when you, you when you let me know about a trained bear, that's fine because yeah. I'll still be marveling at that scene with the yeah. bear. Because if you can get a trained bear who does all of that perfectly, then yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that, that's not happening. And but I think Americans also they they were having problem with Tom Hardy's voice. They couldn't tell what it was saying. I understood him perfectly. Same. He had an accent, but yeah. I guess it's because we were thinking maybe while watching the film perhaps? possibly yeah or um, just enjoying it because as soon as i got home my brother asked me 
So, did you understand what Tom Hardy was saying? So, obviously, this is spread. Everyone knows, yes. apparently, that Americans don't can't understand him. Americans can't understand Americans. Is there anything yeah. Americans can understand? Um, Other than racism? <laughs> Donald Trump. Actually, no. I don't think they, no, they don't understand racism, do they? Mm. They it's understand Donald Trump. Because well, he got a small loan of a million dollars. That's like 30% of like Americans understand Donald Trump somehow. Yeah. But anything else you want to add before we kind of uh, finish up this uh, review? Uh, it's a great film. Uh, it's the film of 2016. It's the film to beat. Exactly. If a film can beat this, I will be surprised. And we were debating and we were kind of saying like, wh- what is even in the running to like I mean, go up against this film? I, I had a theory that Kind of like last year, films just came out of nowhere. And if there's a film that comes out of nowhere that's uh, so amazing, mm. I'm not like if it's better than Revenant, I'll be surprised. Yeah, because we are counting Revenant as 2016 because yeah. its release date within America was um, was very close to the end of the year for the yeah. most part. So and I then, think it's it is definitely worth doing that. Yeah, considering it follows came out for us in January. Like last, not was it January last year or it was 2016? Yeah, it was January. Like yeah, yeah. this film released. December twenty fifth, in America. Yeah. So, for that, us, it that's came a two thousand sixteen yeah. film because everyone was hyped over Star Wars for some yeah. dumb reason. But um, yeah, I mean, um, good film, fantastic film. The, like I've already said, the one to beat. I would definitely, obviously, it's very the age. But yeah. then again, if you oh, go no, to no. the cinema we went to, anyone can if, go if in. If you're an eight year old, go see it with um, apparently your family. Yeah, because they'll let you in. Yeah. Um, and then if you really want to know what cinema that is, that just has no respect for any kind of laws well i'll you know private message me and i'll give you yeah. the link to their website yeah yeah so shall we end it there yeah yeah definitely cool cool this was a um just a well i would say quick but it was just a uh, somewhat detailed review of the revenant and uh, i guess we'll probably do more like these there will yeah. always be quicker reviews but i think we'll do another one like this um Hey, so I want to thank you for actually uh, coming on, doing this with me. Thank you. Thanks for seeing the uh, film with me. And thanks for sharing <laughs> no, your thoughts fine. as well. Yeah. Um, hope to see you, you and you guys, hopefully listening, because this was an audio-only one, on the next one, and we'll see you later. Uh, I, I forgot my next word. No, you just say later. Uh, Dewey. Laters. <laughs>